we're going to take a look at value studies and how you put down different values in a drawing. Um, this is true for painting as well, but we work with uh, drawing in this particular uh, class. And um, it isn't so much, there's many different ways to get down tone. As you can see from these examples, it doesn't matter what your goal is, or what your style is, it's, it's very, very representative. This is a pencil drawing by Anthony Ryder. This technique would be a very smooth uh, application of a pencil. Van Gogh used a series of strokes and stippling marks. But you can see how he got his differences in darkness and lightness with these very distinctive strokes. It, it, that was part of his style, his familiar way of, feel good way of working. This is Katie Kolbitz who um, it just had a random, her markings were so random but so full of energy. Um, she would not have been one to very carefully lay down a crosshatch. Um, and it, it doesn't, it, this is, um, a very uh, core um, skill across the board. It doesn't matter if you're doing representative art or abstract art. This is a drawing by Louise Nevelson. And you can see she has some, some fairly, um, I would call them discipline marks here. But what's uh, important to notice in all of these is the variation in tones, which means lights and darks. And we seem to enjoy looking at uh, artwork and even photographs that have this variation of tone. There are many tools out there to help us see the different grades of tone. This is one that I use sometimes. This is a standard um, 10 uh, grades of tone, starting with the blackest being one, of them, the pure white being the other, and then there's one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in between that are grades of lightness or darkness. Our eye actually sees many more than that. To actually draw, this is an exercise that many classical drawers, uh, artists, and even artists today in our time practice getting down pencil markings that can distinguish all those different shades. It's very difficult to do. We are going to work with five, and that's a, a challenge enough. So um, one way to, uh, first of all, you, it's, it's important to see them, but one way to get them down is to um, just, you know, practice going across a strip. You can, you can make, little um, rectangles if you want to and just practice repeating what is here. Another way, which is I think a little more fun, is to do this sort of ribbon and I'm gonna I'm using this larger tool uh, at first so we can see it clearly and that is to make a series of lines, a diagonal, a horizontal, another diagonal, a horizontal down here and then repeat that. Diagonal, horizontal, diagonal, horizontal, diagonal. And then to, to repeat this shape below it. So diagonal, horizontal, down, across, up, across, down, across, and up. So this is intended to mirror that. And this is a non-ruler exercise. It'll be a little... Um, you know, not exactly matching up in parallel, and that's okay because it makes it kind of fun uh, to have these little irregularities. And then I'm connecting these points, which gives it, it makes it look like a sort of ribbon or a, a, a wooden um, walkway through a marsh or whatever you want to imagine it to be. And we're going to do three tones uh, a pure white, a sort of mid-tone, 
and then a real dark. And we're gonna just pretend that the light is coming from this direction, which actually in my window it is. So this one I'm going to do very, very lightly. This one I'm gonna leave pure white. This one I'm going to do a little bit darker. I'm sorry, that's four tones. One, two, three. This is a little bit darker than that one. And then this one I'm going to do really dark. And the way to uh, change from light to, to very light to very dark and, and things in between is the practice of pressure and repetition. So I'm pressing harder here, but I know I can get it a little bit darker. So I'm going to go a, a different direction, not a, uh, at right angles because that'll make a basket weave sometimes. I'm going to go slightly different and I'm pressing and that's just going to fill it in and I'll get a nice solid black. So I'm going to repeat that process. So this one is very light. This one I'm going to leave pure white. This one is a little bit darker. And I'm not worried about the direction of my strokes. Um, I think it's kind of fun to, in this particular exercise, to keep them um, irregular like that. And then this one I'm going very, very dark. So I'm going to go back over this so I can get it as dark as possible. And then this one I'm repeating those up, up the hill. So it's up the hill, I'm at the hill, down the hill, in the valley. Up the hill, I'm at the top of the mountain, down the hill, or whatever... Um, sort of imagery you want to think about. Um, now we can refine this even more by doing another exercise. Instead of the sharp lines here, I'm going to do a wavy line. So I'm going to go up and down, up, down. And then I'm going to repeat that right below it. So up, down, up, down, up, down. This is sort of like if you took a ribbon and laid it across uh, a series of pencils or something. Um, and so I'm going to repeat the very light here, white on the top, a little bit darker here, and very dark in the valleys. But I'm going to see if I can get in some other tone there. So I'm going very, very light here. I'm stopping. Then I want this to be a little bit darker as I go down the hill. And I'm using, uh, this is just a number two pencil, and I'm using the smaller pencil because I have a little more control over the variation of tone here. Now I'm pressing very hard, and I'm going up the hill and lightening up a little bit, leaving the top of the hill, pressing a little bit harder as I go down. Now I'm in the valley, coming up, and I'm, I'm leaning over I would really want to sit down so I could concentrate on this, but then there's no place for me to sit because my camera is in the way. So um, I'm going to go back over this now and for one thing, see if I can get this valley much darker. And then I'm going to see if I can get a variance between this tone and this tone, and I'm going to go very lightly, and I'm, I'm layering here. We talked about layering last time, or glazing is another word for it. Just very lightly back and forth to see if I can get a variation as I come up this little hill. And if it gets too dark, one easy way with graphite to get it up is to dab at it like this. And that keeps it, it takes up some of the graphite but keeps it from smearing. So then I can go back and do a little bit of uh, what I call weaving or knitting, gradually going from the very dark to a little bit darker, letting up on my pressure here so that I can get it light, and then really letting up on my pressure to have it fade into nothing. 
So this is something that is one of those things, uh, the more practice you do, the more you can see the tones and the better you can put them down. So if we were doing um, something from life, or something from, a, if we were copying an image, such as this Durer here, and would want to, uh, can't readily see all the different grades of tone there, this is a helpful tool. I can put it down and match. Now I would say, let's see, that matches, no, I think this matches better. Then this is dark, really dark. There, that matches the very dark one. And I could probably find a match for each one of these tones. And so this just helps me by isolating it through these little holes, helps me to um, train my eye to see all those different um, shades. And then it's, it's a little more tricky doing it from life. Um, Durer has done a lot of the work for us here when we work from life. It's exciting, but a little more challenging. But you can actually hold this up. I don't know if this will work, but uh, with the camera, but um, by moving this back and forth, you can see, you can match where the lights and darks are and would be helpful in uh, drawing that accurately.